Hello, our beautiful neurodiverse friends. We are so glad to have you today as we talk about preparing for the holidays with a focus on neurodivergence. So typically these webinars are only available to our members and we do a live interactive webinar. Um, we also always do a pre-recording, which is available to view by our members whenever they want. But this year for the holidays, we are giving everyone free access to one of our webinars. This one's a little bit of, of a condensed one, and it's also has um, just me talking, typically it'd be me and Stephanie. Um, but here you are, let's dive in. Okay, for those of you non-members, I just kind of wanted to run through what we typically do during the webinars and kind of what can be expected as this can help us uh, kind of more mentally prepare for what we're getting ourselves into. So we have webinars the first Wednesday of every month that are scheduled from 8 to 9.30 p.m. in Eastern time. Uh, we have a Zoom link and we all meet together. Uh, we also offer a pre-recording of the webinar, which is available on the member homepage 24 hours after that interactive webinar happens. And so that allows for folks to go back and rewatch them if they want to you know, take an additional time to process, or if they weren't able to attend or chose not to attend, they get access. So our members' interaction in the webinar is completely optional. Um, it's welcome, but it's certainly not required. And all the resources that we go through, because we often will sprinkle in resources as we go along, all of those are available both on our Discord and will soon also be available on our member homepage as well. We're really trying to create a comprehensive uh, resource directory for our members. All right, so that's what to expect. Um, you should also expect a little bit of dog noise because Kyra the Corgi insists upon being present for the webinars and occasionally she has thoughts. So she is just along for the ride. Okay, so in all of our webinars, we present a lot of topics that will have relevance for all brains, but we really put a specific emphasis on how does this apply to neurodivergent brains? So when we're thinking about the holidays, we're really gonna be thinking about it through the lens of supporting neurodiversity. So for most people, the holiday season can be stressful and overwhelming, uh, especially for those who are neurodivergent. It's important to recognize and respect neurodiversity throughout the year, but especially at this time. During the holidays, many neurodivergent individuals may struggle with sensory overload from bright lights, loud music, and crowded spaces. Additionally, changes in routines and social expectations can cause anxiety and stress. And there's just a lot of executive functioning that has to happen this time of year. So we're going to think about the holidays and their impact on all of these different domains of differences that we experience as neurodivergent individuals. So this would include things like our sensory processing differences, our sensory sensitivities, our emotion regulation differences. Um, if we're thinking about executive functions, specific ones might be flexible thinking, uh, organization, planning, prioritizing, working memory. We're also gonna think about social differences between autistic and holistic individuals, neurodivergent and neurotypical individuals. And again, sensory, sensory, sensory. So being neurodivergent around the holidays isn't all a bad thing. There are a lot of unique strengths that we as neurodivergent individuals have that can really help make this time of year incredibly special. A lot of us are uh, extraordinarily creative. Some of us have great attention to detail. Some of us experience sensory processing differences that allow us to be more immersed in our experience and care more about the feel and the sound and the experience than others. However, we may more commonly experience social anxiety, sensory overload, or executive burnout. So we first want to consider the holidays from a sensory framework. So the vast majority of neurodivergent individuals are going to experience some differences in how they process sensory information. We are all sensory beings. We do not exist in a vacuum, so we are interacting with our environment. That being said, neurodivergent individuals tend to have more 
extremes when it comes to processing social or sensory information. So what are some ways in which we can either set up our uh, family gatherings or holiday parties to be more inclusive or can make requests for accommodations for ourselves so that the events we're attending are inclusive of everyone. So how to be more sensory friendly? One great strategy is to consider uh, informing guests of movement or loud family gathering portions of the bookends of the event. That will provide the opportunity for those who need um, to know about that in advance and gives them the opportunity to remove themselves from the potential overstimulation. So by the bookends, we mean if there's going to be a more sensory um, enriched or sensory intense experience, having that at the start or the end of the event so that someone can choose to come earlier or leave earlier and not have to participate. When we're considering decorations, we want to be thinking about avoiding anything that could potentially trigger seizures or could can, can, um, result in intense sensory overload. So things like flashing lights. Um, we all have our feelings about the, the rich smells that are associated with the holidays. I know a lot of people really enjoy, you know, the smell of fresh pine and cinnamon, nutmeg, I don't know. Um, but it's not enjoyable for everyone. So keeping that in mind when you are setting up your space that you're not overwhelming the olfactory system. Um, maybe you want to opt for some tactile friendly pillows for stimming, place some options for visual stimulation, such as the fireplace on um, or using snow globes. When we're thinking about food, we want to consider dietary restrictions always, but we also want to consider sensory preferences. And this can include the utensil and plate options as well. And we want to consider foods with familiar options. It's okay to get a little wild and experience some of the more unique and extravagant dishes around the holidays, but it can be really helpful to have some basic staples there as well. Maybe it's cheese and crackers. Maybe it's the option to make a sandwich. Just something that provides a little bit of familiarity and consistency for that individual because it might be the thing that allows them to stay safe and regulated within the space. It doesn't necessarily need to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. So while we're talking about sensory processing, I think it's really important to recognize that oftentimes uh, one of the major contributors of experiencing a meltdown or a shutdown can be sensory overload. Uh, a really helpful strategy for a lot of people to help regulate their emotions and become less sensory overwhelmed is to engage in co-regulation. So co-regulation is whenever you are pairing up with someone else's nervous system and you are allowing their nervous system to help regulate your own. And often this is done through turning off the voice, sitting still with that person in a safe space. It could be providing a hug. It could be holding a hand. Um, so having the source of co-regulation is especially critical during the holidays. Um, it's this idea of having another safe person there with you whose presence helps to regulate and ground you. So what are some other ways that you can co-regulate? Well, you can just sit with that person. You can share responsibility. Ask how you can assist with something. Better yet, just assist without asking questions. And for all of these ways to co-regulate that we're mentioning here, I think it's really important to keep in mind that when someone is experiencing a shutdown or a meltdown, really there should be no further demands placed. We're not at this point asking questions of what do you need from me or what's going on or how can I help you? These kinds of conversations hopefully happen in advance or it's that safe co-regulator who already knows what your needs are to communicate what you need when you're already in a state of burn of shutdown or meltdown is near impossible. So really encourage you as you're going into the holidays to really talk with that safe person in advance and let them know like, hey, if this starts happening, this is what that means for me. And like, if we could just go to the 
cult room and just sit and scroll on our phones for a bit, I think I'll be okay. Right? So just sitting with that person, removing the demands, turning the voice off, modeling some deep breathing, often telling someone to take a deep breath again is a demand and it's not going to be super helpful. But if you yourself as the co-regulator, just start taking more mindful breaths, that indirect cue can help that person's nervous system pick up on that and start breathing in sync with you. Um, touch for some people, deep pressure or even light touch can be very grounding for that person. Of course, it's something you want to know in advance because for others, touch can do the exact opposite. So it could be just giving them a hug, uh, just placing the hand on theirs. Also, I think it's really important to have realistic expectations going in to these events, these socialization, these holiday celebrations. So prior to the event, it can be really helpful to discuss realistic expectations for each other um, verbally to take pressure away from emotional distress in the moment. So kind of like the example I showed before going into it saying like, hey, I'm anticipating this might be challenging for me. And if you see me do this, this is what that is. Recognizing that the ability to identify what triggers are, communicate those, anticipate, and then make plans for how to regulate. These are all pretty advanced skills that not everyone is going to have yet. But this is a place that a lot of us can get to with time and with understanding our brains and really putting in a lot of work with our meaningful relationships to be able to advocate for ourselves and feel safe that our needs will be met. Okay, next I want to spend a little time talking about supporting our executive functioning differences during this holiday season. So one good way to be able to support ourselves is by planning ahead. But of course, for a lot of us, planning ahead is exactly the thing that we struggle mo most with. So this can be really helpful to have some support in planning ahead. The more that we are able to plan and anticipate, the greater sense of control that we have and the less unpredictability we can anticipate, which can help immensely with our, our state of anxiety or emotional dysregulation. So some of these things you'll be able to plan for yourselves. Others, you might say, hey, I want support planning these things and you might have that support person who's able to help you plan those. In other cases, you might know someone who is a really good planner and, hey, if you help me plan, I'll do this thing for you, a little bit of mutual aid. So thinking about planning ahead, structured gift giving can be really helpful, setting up what the expectations are around gifting. That takes off a lot of pressure of having to try and anticipate and assume what others are going to want or need. So talking about budgets, making and sharing lists, um, communicating about gift preferences. We're gonna talk a little bit more about gifts later, but there's a little start there. Um, plan for predictability. Stick to a predictable schedule or routine whenever possible and communicate changes in advance. So what does that really look like for the holidays? Well, it could look like a supportive family identifying that Every year we do this specific activity on this day. We choose to be with this family on that day. Depending on where you are in your life, this might look a lot different. But if you are someone who's trying to juggle multiple families, it's okay for you to say, this is what my immediate family is doing at this time. If you want to be there, the door's open. Um, it's really okay. It's really okay to do what you want and to not do what you don't want all the time, but especially around the holidays. I think so much of the holidays are written with expectations and fulfillment of traditions that we don't even know why we're doing or believe in anymore. And I think, I think you can just say no sometimes. So anyway. Um, planning out decompression time is going to be really critical for you. If you have the ability to be able to uh, take additional time off after the holidays, even if it's just a single day to decompress, 
uh, that can really help reset uh, for post-holiday season. It's going to be so important that you uh, plan to be kind to yourself and plan not only decompression, but self-care um, and self-compassion that, hey, if the holidays don't go as I'm hoping, like, that's okay. Life will go on and we can learn from that. And we get to try again next year. It's really challenging when we put so much pressure and expectations on ourselves. But I don't know. I don't know what my thought was there. Just had a dramatic sigh. And I'm going to carry on. But if I think of it, I'll let you know. I probably won't think of it, though. Also, I'm trying to do this all in one go, which is crazy. And you're also seeing how my brain works. And sometimes words don't come to me, but I'm neurodivergent and I'm not sorry about it. Oof. So I think for a lot of us, a lot of our anxiety around the holidays can resolve or revolve around our social interactions and navigating differences in communication styles, values, beliefs, um, prior expectations and prior um, understanding of who we are, mismatching of our current selves, right? And so I think just anticipating all of those interactions can be almost paralyzing. So just a couple of things to keep in mind and think about as you are mentally preparing to get yourself into these situations. Um, and using some of these as scripts, if that's helpful for you. So preferred language. Oftentimes, people will say things that we perceive as hurtful. Um, and the intention isn't to hurt. It's just ignorance, right? They didn't know that was a thing that was hurtful for you. You can choose to say nothing. That's fine. If you want to use it as a learning experience for that person, you could say something along the lines of, I'm sure you mean no harm by your word choice, but I'm more comfortable with the term autistic, or I'm more comfortable with the term, you name it. Um, how to talk about your identity. So you're someone who's late diagnosed, or you're someone who's been diagnosed a long time, but has never disclosed that to anyone but you feel the desire to share that identity with others. Or perhaps someone brings it up because they heard about it and you weren't planning to bring it up, right? There's so many different scenarios here. I think it's important to recognize that there is no expectations around you sharing your identity with others. If you feel like it would be beneficial to you in the long run to have these conversations and disclose to get some support, then maybe trying something like I identify as a neurodivergent. My brain works differently than most and my experience of the world is different too. Maybe you wanna be more explicit. Maybe you wanna be more specific. Maybe you wanna be less. If someone asks you and you just don't wanna talk about it at all, you can kindly, I appreciate your interest, but I don't feel up to discussing it right now. You can also just walk away. You really can. Now, if you are really interested and really excited to talk about your identity and your newfound knowledge, and you want to use this as an opportunity to share what you've learned to others and educate, maybe it'd be helpful to identify like two or three resources that you can recommend. Um, in case the conversation comes up or you choose to initiate it. So I think having those jot, jotted down somewhere, maybe in a note on your phone could be really helpful. So when you're in the moment, you're like, let me send some resources to you. Again, how you choose to engage with your family and friends at this time, how you choose to navigate these conversations, it's up to you. There's no right or wrong thing to do and you are not required to nor expected to advocate and educate to others just because you identify as neurodivergent. That burden doesn't um, fall upon you by nature of your identity, but you might be someone who is inclined to provide that education to others and here are some ideas. Okay, 
let's talk about gift giving. So if gift giving is something you choose to participate in or your family chooses to participate in, here are some more executive function friendly options. Gift cards are a great choice. Asking for explicit ideas and providing explicit ideas to others so you know that you're going to get what you actually need or want. Um, the app Elfster is a great way to share your wish list with others. You can also do so on Amazon. There's, I think it's called Christmas wish list. There's a lot of apps that you can do this with. Ordering online and selecting pre-wrapped can be a great option as well to reduce some of that executive functioning load. And hey, wait a minute. I'm just saying, you can choose to forego gifts. You can participate in activities or shared time instead, or like maybe you don't need to do anything at all. And maybe that's okay. I guess my hope is that you walk away from this webinar tonight questioning a little bit the assumptions around the holidays, the things that you have always done just because that's the way it's done before and really reflect on what's meaningful to me and what do, what do I want out of this time and what's important for those who I love and how can I help make this enjoyable for them without draining myself. If you're looking for some suggestions on gift ideas you could ask for for others, here are a ton of good ideas here. <laughs> I say about things that I wrote, here are a ton of ideas that I think are useful and I enjoy myself. So lots of tools that can be really supportive for our sensory executive functioning and emotion regulation needs, some subscription services, different services, and leisure items, things that align with our interests. All right, we're just gonna run through now some quick summary, quick synopsis of the topics we touched on today and some quick tips for surviving the holidays and thriving through the holidays. So bathroom breaks are your friends, scheduling sensory breaks for yourself, engaging in short stays. You don't need to stay until midnight. It's perfectly okay to go home at 9 p.m. if that's what you want and need. Bringing a co-regulator can be extremely helpful. Scheduling recharge time after the holidays. Being realistic about what you're committing to. Um, participating in some heavy work tasks prior to uh, a stressful encounter can help kind of regulate you before going into the event. Again, some quick tips to think about for um, planning inclusive holiday events is giving advance notice and being flexible, setting up activities that allow uh, individual participation and allows people to use their hands and feel like they know what to do in a certain situation. Like really unstructured socialization can be more challenging. So having the option for things like puzzles or crafts or coloring uh, can be really helpful. Providing some basic and predictable food options and avoiding overly loud music, strobe lights, and strong artificial scents. So I hope that this presentation, this webinar has made you reflect a little bit about uh, your holiday traditions and which ones support or maybe drain your spoons and your executive sensory and emotional functional, emotional regulation needs and skills as a neurodivergent person. And I hope that you could do something to be kind to your brain I hope that you can embrace yourself and think smarter, not harder this holiday season. If you want to explore more topics on neurodiversity and engage in interaction around these topics with us, we encourage you to join our next webinar, which will be the first Wednesday of January and the first Wednesday of every month next year. And we really look forward to learning and growing with and from you guys. Thanks so much for joining and happy holidays.